We are on FRQ Topic 8, Polars. Um, and polars, some of the FRQs that I have seen are with a calculator, some are without. Here are the recent years. So we have not seen a polar FRQ lately on the AP exam. So that means that they are sprinkled in the multiple choice parts. Okay, so something good to know. I don't know if that um, will continue, or maybe this is the year that we'll see a polar FRQ. Just don't know. All right, um, part A almost always asks you to find the area of a, of a shaded region on the graph. Sometimes you're only given one polar curve, sometimes two. Use logic. Think about what your boundaries need to be. You need to know the polar area formula. So even if it's not an FRQ, it's going to be on the multiple choice part, and this is definitely going to be on the exam. Definitely. It's a BC only topic. It's going to be there. Polar area. Remember that the, theta, that the lower theta boundary must be smaller than the upper theta boundary. Must be. Um, the, that means that your, your boundaries are going counterclockwise because theta is getting bigger, right? must go counterclockwise, it must make sense, <laughs> okay? So be careful with your boundaries. The integrand on these is usually the easy part, right? The boundaries are the hard part. So use symmetry, help you um, make your life easier on polar area. Okay, x is equal to r cosine theta y is equal to r sine theta. We use those to get leftward and rightward movement or um, vertical movement, but we also use them to get slope of the tangent line to the graph. So that's another important formula for us in polars. Okay. So anytime you're asked about X or Y, you pull out, in polars, anytime you're asked about X or Y, you pull out these two little formulas, okay? dr d theta determines if the curve is moving towards the origin or away from the origin, okay? If R is positive, which it usually is when you're asked this question, if r is positive, then if dr d theta is positive, you're moving away from the origin because r is getting bigger. If dr d theta is smaller, then r is decreasing and you are moving towards the origin. Like I said, assuming that r is positive. Okay, um, in most polar questions, r is positive. Okay but not always, be careful with that. But distance from a, the origin to a point out on a curve, if R is positive, is just R. Otherwise, it would be the absolute value of R, okay? So if you're finding the can, if you're asked what is the maximum or minimum distance from the origin, use the candidates test, but use the absolute value of R uh, in the cases where R could be negative. Okay, the distance between two polar curves. Think outer minus inner, outer minus inner, okay? So the rate that that distance is changing would be the derivative of outer minus inner. The average value of that distance would be your average value formula with outer minus inner, okay? All right, in part six, in um, number six here, in part D, um, oftentimes they throw a particle traveling along the curve and they ask you to do some kind of a little short related rates problem, okay? Just take your derivative with respect to T. These are not bad problems. Okay, doke, let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example I have is back from 2013, okay? The global average was only a 3.4, that's pretty low. 
says the graphs of the polar curve r is equal to 3, that's a circle centered at the origin with radius 3, and this limousine, this limousine with no loop, are shown in the figure. The curves intersect when theta is pi over 6, and theta is 5 pi over 6. That was sure nice of them to give me that. That way I didn't have to solve this equation by myself. Let S be the shaded region that is inside the graph of R is equal to 3 and also inside of the graph of the Limousin. Find the area of S. Area of S. So area of a polar is integral 1 half R squared D theta. That's the formula for the area of a polar curve. Okay, so for part A, I'm going to have integral. Okay, so here's my shaded curve, my shaded region, I mean. I see that from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, I need the limousin. From pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, I need that limousin. So from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6, 1 half of that r squared, the limousin. Like that. So that will give me what I shaded in pink here. Now I need to add to that something else. I need to add to that the rest. Okay. So for this one, I'm going to begin at 5 pi over 6. I'm beginning at 5 pi over 6. Now where am I going to stop? I began at 5 pi over 6. Okay. If you go all the way around, If you go all the way around, are you stopping at pi over 6? No, you are not. Because if you go all the way around, you're not at pi over 6. You're at 13 pi over 6. So this is going to be integral 5 pi over 6 to 13 pi over 6 of one half of that r squared d theta. Now that's not the only way I could have done that. I could have said I could have started at 5 pi over 6 and stopped at 3 pi over 2 and then doubled that piece because these two sections are have symmetry. They are the same. Could have done that. This problem was with a calculator, so I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to <clears throat> get rid of what's here. And in for y1, I'm going to go ahead and put that 4 minus 2 sine of theta. Again, I'm always in function mode, so all my thetas are x's. Okay. So I'm going to have here math 9 pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of 1 half y1 squared dx, that would mean that piece, plus math 9 5 pi over 6 to 13 pi over 6 of 1 half, 3 squared is 9 d theta dx. So I get 24.708, at least three numbers after the decimal point, and that is the area of S. Okay. Part B.
particle moves along the Limousin curve so that at time t seconds theta is equal to t squared. Find the time between 1 and 2 for which the x coordinate of the, po of the particle's position is negative 1. I am in a polar question and they have they want me to say something about an x coordinate or we have to use x coordinate. So I'm going to pull out x is equal to r cosine theta. Okay? So I want for the x coordinate to be negative 1. So I need for that to be negative 1. I'm going to say what I'm doing x is equal to r cosine theta. And they're telling me that that is negative 1. I know what r is. r is that limousin. So I have 4 minus 2 sine theta cosine theta is equal to negative 1. But they don't want theta. I don't want theta. I want time. And theta is t squared. So in place of theta, they just told me to put in t squared. So I'm going to do that. And I need to find t. Find t. Between 1 and 2, so I'll set my window appropriately. So I'm going to go to my calculator. I'm turning off y1 here, and I'm going to put this function in. So carefully, I'm going to put that in. 4 minus 2 sine t squared cosine t squared. And, and then in for y3, I'm going to put negative 1. In my window, 1 to 2. And I don't know what to make my y min and y max from the previous problem that I had. It was negative 5 to 5. Um, that'll work for me because I know it's going to be, uh, I just need to find out where negative 1 is crossed. So that's going to work for me. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so that's the time that I want, whatever that is. So second calc 5, enter, enter, enter. Time is 1.4279. So that is the time when the x coordinate is negative 1. Part C. For the particle described in Part B, find the position vector. The position vector in terms of t. Well, position is x, y. Right? That's x, y. And then I need to find the velocity vector, which is x prime at time 1.5, y prime at time 1.5. That's the velocity vector, right? So two things here. I need to remember to do that second thing. OK, so first of all, the position vector. Well, right here, I did. I already did the x, the x coordinate. This piece right here is the x coordinate of the pos of the position vector. So it's going to be four minus two sine of t squared cosine of t squared, that's the x-coordinate of the position vector. And now I need the y-coordinate of the position vector. So the y-coordinate will be the same thing, except instead of cosine here, it will be a sine. So 4 minus 2 sine of t squared times sine of t squared. And that's the position vector. For the velocity vector,
that's going to be x prime at 1.5, y prime at 1.5. I'm writing it like that because I'm going to let my calculator do the work for me. So let's go do, let's go find those answers. Okay, in for y, in for y2, in for y2 I have the x coordinate. So in for y3, I'm going to put the y coordinate. So y2 and y3, so when I go to my home screen, I'm going to do math 8 of y2 for the x-coordinate at time 1.5. And then for the y-coordinate, I'm going to come and do y3. So we're going to have negative 8.072 negative 1.672. Okay, that was that. Let's take a look at how this was scored in part A. For part A, they gave one point for the integrand, and they made it singular because we could have just used two-thirds of the area of a circle for that one. Most of my students just use the integral. That's why I did it with an integral. One point for the limits and constant. I think that they're mostly talking about this one here. The constant is the 1 half. And then one point for the answer. For part B. They awarded one point for either x at, at theta, x in terms of theta, or x in terms of t. One point for either of those. One point for setting your x equal to negative one, either x of theta or x of t. And then one point for the answer, that time value. For part C, it was also worth three points. Um, two points were awarded for the position vector. I'm not positive, but I'm assuming that that was one point for the x coordinate and one point for the y coordinate, and then one point for the velocity vector. So that's how they scored that problem that year. Back in. 2013. It's been a little while now. Let's take a look at 2014. <clears throat> this one was also with a calculator. Take a look at this one. Okay, the graphs of the polar curves, r is equal to 3, again, and r is equal to 3 minus 2 sine of 2 theta are shown in this figure for theta between 0 and pi. And it certainly looks like theta between 0 and pi. Part A, find the area, um, find the shaded area. Okay, so they describe it. It's inside the graph of r is equal to 3 and also inside of the graph of um, 3 minus 2 sine of 2 theta. Okay, so I'm taking a look. I usually do it like this I'm starting at theta is equal to 0. And the region that I want is right here, yeah? I'm stopping right there because here is that funky curve. Once I go past pi over 2, I don't want to stay on the funky curve. Now I switch to the circle. So again, I'm going to need two integrals because there are two distinct pieces to this. Okay, so for part, for part A here, 
I'm going to have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of 1 half of that r squared d theta. And now for the other piece. I could do this with an integral. Integral pi over 2 to pi 1 half 3 squared d theta. I could, but this is a quarter of a circle. 1 fourth pi times the radius squared. So you could use an integral for that, but you don't have to. I'm going to, like we did the last time, I'm going to go to my y equals and I'm going to put that funky curve equation in for y1 carefully. Make sure you get it in there correctly. Okay. So then when I put this in it will make it a little bit easier to type in. Math 9, 0 to pi over 2 0.5 of that r squared d theta plus 1 fourth pi times 9. Okay? Part B. For the curve, for the funky curve, find the value of dx d theta at theta is pi over 6. dx d theta, well x is r cosine theta. x is r cosine theta. So dx d, d theta at theta is pi over 6 is just x prime at pi over 6. Right? They gave me r. Right? So I'm going to, I, well, I think I'm just going to use the home screen here. So I'm taking the derivative of r, which is my y1, times cosine theta at pi over 6. Okay, let my calculator do all of that. A word of warning. Right here when I multiplied y1 times cosine theta, which is what I wanted to do, I wanted to multiply r times cosine theta. What if, instead of using the multiplication button, what if I had used that for multiplication? Would that have worked? Would that have worked? No. It would not have worked. Because this is reading, your calculator does exactly what you told it to do. And you told your calculator to evaluate y1 at cosine x. Your calculator put cosine x in for every x in y1, then took the derivative, then plugged in pi over 6. So you don't want to use this for multiplication if you have a function right here. You must use the multiplication button. Okay. I did part B. I just want and I I just reread part B to make sure I wasn't forgetting to do something. Part C. The distance between the two curves. Okay. The distance between the two curves. Outer minus inner curve. Outer curve minus inner curve. 
The distance between those two curves changes between 0 and pi over 2. So outer minus inner. So this is the distance between those two curves. And it is indeed changing from 0 to pi over 2. The outer is r is equal to 3. The inner is the funky curve. Yeah? So that distance is changing from 0 to pi over 2. Find the rate at which it is changing when theta is pi over 3. Pi over 3 is up here somewhere. So we want to find the rate that it is changing right there. I know it's going to be negative. I know the rate is negative because this distance is decreasing at that point. So I know it's going to be a negative number. So first I'm going to say that the distance is the outer minus the inner 3 minus 3 minus 2 sine of 2 theta. which I could make my life a little bit easier by saying that that is 2 sine of 2 theta. That's the distance. We want to know the rate at which the distance is changing with respect to theta when theta is pi over 3. So the derivative of that distance at pi over 3 is what? So I need to find the derivative the derivative with respect to theta of 2 sine of 2 theta at theta equals pi over 3. And I get negative 2. Or you could write negative 1.9999999999. What you see back here is um, an error that's caused by the, um, the calculator's numerical process. It reaches a, a level of tolerance and it um, stops, stops working. Okay. Part D. A particle is now moving along that funky curve so that d theta dt is 3 for all times greater than 0. Find the value of dr d dt when theta is pi over 6. These questions freak kids out sometimes, but I think that they are very easy because they give us r. We want dr dt. Just take the derivative of both sides with respect to t r is equal to 3 minus 2 sine of 2 theta. Just take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. They give me r. They ask me for dr dt. I take the derivative with respect to t. It's not that bad. So dr dt is equal to, okay, the derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of this piece it's going to still be negative 4 cosine of 2 theta d theta dt because of the chain rule. Now I'm going to plug in 3 for d theta dt and pi over 6 for theta. So dr dt when theta is pi over 6 is negative 4 cosine 2 times pi over 6 is pi over 3 times d theta dt was 3. And I'm going to save stop right there because we can. Even though we have a calculator, that does not mean we have to use it. Okay? Alrighty. Um, that reminds me up here, I could have just taken this derivative by hand and then plugged in pi over 3. If I had done that, I would have gotten 4 cosine of 2 theta at pi over 3 would have been 4 cosine of pi over um, of 2 pi over 3. 
which would have given me negative 2. Would have given me negative 2. Okay, how did they score this problem? Let's find out. For part A, 1 point for the integral, 1 point for, it must have been the integrand, 1 point for the limits, um, 1 point for the answer, 3 points for that area question. For part B, 1 point for the expression for x, and 1 point for the answer. For part C, 1 point for the expression for distance, one point for the answer, the distance, two points for part C. Part D also worth two points, one point for the chain rule, in other words the derivative of that using the chain rule, and then one point for the answer. Okay, uh, those were our two questions. So that's polars, polar FRQs.